Welcome back to the channel. This week's video is about installing Hugo modules into a Hugo project. For this week's video, you'll need the latest version of Hugo and also the Go language installed. If you need any help with that, I've got a link above to my installing Hugo video. Before we start, a quick message from this video's sponsor. As a Skillshare teacher, I've partnered up with them to offer you a free one month trial using my link below. I personally produce full length Hugo courses on Skillshare and there are many other great teachers on Skillshare ready to help you level up your skills for your next big project. Click on the link below for their free one month trial. You can cancel at any time. So in the description below, I've left a link to the files that you'll need for this tutorial. The easiest way to go about getting a copy of them is using the green code button and then downloading a zip file. Once you've got those files extracted and you've opened up the folder in Visual Studio Code, we're ready to get started. First thing we have to do is initialize this project so we can actually use it with Hugo modules. If you open up a new terminal, then the command is Hugo mod init, and you have to then provide the git URL. So in this case, it's github.com slash future dash wd and this is my actual repository i'm working on now and i'm going to be storing it at video dash hugo dash import dash module so whatever the url of your project is you'll have to supply that url you can enter and we're going to end up with a new file which is go.mod if you have a look inside there you'll see at the top we've got the address of the project and then it specifies which version of the Go language is being used. We then need to go about importing a module. I'll have a link to this page and the actual heading link in the description below. Inside your config.yaml there's also an option there of Tomal and Jason. We're using YAML in this particular example. We've got to look at the module entry, we're then going to look at imports and we're going to be defining the path. Now for this particular tutorial, I'm going to be using a Hugo module that I wrote called Hugo Responsive Images. It handles everything you need to do when it comes to generating responsive images. So we've got a configuration here we can actually copy and paste. So we'll copy that. Then we'll go back into our project into config.yaml and we'll paste it in and save it. And then we need to go about pulling that module into our project. And all we'll do that is we'll run the command hugo mod get. And if you wanted to update your modules, you could use dash u. You could even specify the name of the module after it. But for now we can just run hugo mod get. So it's been downloaded. You'll notice we now have a go.sum file. And inside there, we've got the hashes of all the Git repositories that have been used as Hugo modules. And if we go back into our go.mod, you'll see we've now got the Hugo responsive images module listed as a module dependency. We can now go ahead and use the module and so the module files are actually part of this project. One way you can actually go about seeing the content to the module, if we run Hugo mod vendor, you'll see we've now got a vendor folder and it actually lists the modules based on their hierarchy as where they're actually stored online. So this module is stored in github.com We've then got Hugo responsive images and these are the actual files from the Git repository. So if we go into layouts and then we go into partials. These are the actual partials we're going to use. So the main ones are picture, IMG and figure. So we'll go ahead and we'll have a go at using those. I'm going to go ahead and delete that vendor folder because it's not needed. So down in the quick start section, we've got an example of how to create a picture tag. So we'll copy that code. So I'll open up the layouts folder and index.html. There's an image on the sixth line. 
Above that image, we'll paste in the code and we'll fix up the indentation with the tab key. We'll then go about getting the information from this existing image and placing it into the dictionary that we're using for our partial. So we'll copy the file name to start with into the source line. We'll get rid of the width line because we're going to be creating a responsive image with different widths. We'll copy our alt text and then we have to go about our classes. Now by default the IMG fluid class is applied for our picture tag but we want a bunch of different classes as well. So we'll copy our classes and we'll make a new line and we'll use the key class and we'll paste those in. We can then go about deleting the original image. We'll save that and then we'll run the Hugo server. For this particular project there's already a script set up for you in package.json so you can use npm run dev. And then we'll control click on the link. We'll right click on the main image and inspect. And you'll see we've now got a picture tag. We've got a source set for WebP images. We've then got a second source set with the original PNG format as a fallback if WebP isn't supported. And if the browser doesn't support the source tag, we've then got the IMG tag with the PNG, just a single size there as a final fallback. So that's it for the video. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up. If you've got any questions or comments, please leave them down below. Remember to subscribe to the channel and hit the bell notification to get regular updates to all my weekly videos.